Hi guys, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, today I was going to shoot another paranormal video. I know I just shot one telling you about my ghost hunting equipment. But um, I really wanted to touch base with everybody out here about another paranormal phenomenon that I've experienced in my life. I wanted to get your opinions on it and uh, I have a question for you guys at the end that you can respond to me. Um, in comments or you can make a video response again if you want to, whatever is easiest for you guys. And I want to give you guys a little update on the cryptid series that I've been wanting to do on my channel. I did want to do a Jersey Devil video and I am working on it. I have hours and hours and hours of dictation and research that I've been doing, but I had to put a halt on it only because this is a major announcement here. Next month, actually it's in like a week, the beginning of next month, I will be traveling down to the, I want to say the hometown of the Jersey Devil, which is Leeds Point in Smithville, New Jersey. I will be going on vacation with my husband. We won't be staying there, but we will definitely be visiting it where I can get extra footage, pictures, and what have you to add to my video and presentation on the Jersey Devil. So I'm definitely excited about that and I'm glad that I held off on it only because that's going to make it so much better. Um, so hold on, I'm getting those cryptid videos up, I'm just, I just want to make them the best that I can make them. Um, also the book reviews, you're going to be getting them, I want to make the monthly book reviews, so I will be having the first one up within the week, I want to do them at the end of the month, so that. And today's paranormal video is going to be called Disembodied Voices. I want to talk about disembodied voices. Um, I have had experience with disembodied voices. Now what disembodied voices are is voices that cannot be explained, okay? I'm not necessarily talking about EVP here, you know, it's not necessarily voices that I recorded on a voice recorder and played back and said, oh my god, who's speaking? They weren't there, I don't know whose voice that is. I suppose EVP can be considered a disembodied voice, but this is not what this is about, okay? I'm going to give you a story and an example of the scariest and most clear and just creepiest disembodied voice that I've ever experienced in my life and it happened in my parents' house. I know you guys are so surprised to hear that. Um, happened when I was in third grade and my sister was a senior in high school and here's the story. Now <laughs> this is really creepy. but um. My sister, whose name is Lisa, and her best friend, whose name is Lisa, and I, and my mother, were sitting at the kitchen table one afternoon after school. My sister, and Lisa, and I were doing our homework, because that was the rule in our house. After school, every afternoon, we had to do our homework, first thing, no exceptions. My mother was reading a magazine. Everybody was quiet and concentrating on their homework. Out of the blue, from upstairs, I heard a man's voice, a man's loud and creepy ass voice yell, Lisa, just like that, okay? So I stop, I look up, and my sister is looking right at me. Everybody else is looking at their magazine and doing their homework. But my sister and I are looking at each other and we're like, so, we're just like, and we continue doing our homework. About three minutes later, from upstairs, I hear a man's deep and creepy ass voice again say, Lisa! Very loud, okay? This time I look up and my sister is like this, staring at me and I'm like, yeah, I heard that too. And again, her friend Lisa, and my mother are just looking down at what they're doing and they're just not paying any attention. So this time my sister and I are like, you guys didn't hear that? And they're like, hear what? And we're like, somebody just yelled Lisa from upstairs really loud. And they're like, no, we didn't hear that. And we're like, okay. But we heard that. And you know what is the best part of that story is I'm not the only one who heard it. So. There's clarification that that happened. Now my question is, 
who the hell was that number one? Why the hell were they calling either my sister or her best friend? And why, most importantly, was my sister and I the only ones who could hear it? Is it because we're HSP, highly sensitive people, and we have some sort of clairvoyance and we hear things that other people can't hear? Or were just my sister and I meant to hear that? I don't know. I will never know. It can't be explained. But it was definitely one of the most creepy ass things that happened to me. I'm saying creepy ass a lot in this video because this is creepy ass, okay? So that was the first, pretty much, I believe the first disembodied voice thing that I heard, okay? I had other experiences in that house with disembodied voices, hearing, um, you know, a dog bark. After we had a dog when I was younger, her name was Missy. She passed on when I was in third grade before this, you know, Lisa thing happened. And then we had um, another dog named Moochie. She died when I was 25. So after she died, we didn't get a dog after that. We let it settle down and we actually got a dog right, out, right before I moved out of her house into here. Um, my parents house and okay between Moochie and the other dog Tracker all the time after that dog passed away we could hear a little dog upstairs random times barking and I'm not the only one who heard it my mother has heard it there was a girl that I actually just ran to in the supermarket the other day and she saw all the stuff that I've been posting on Facebook I've been posting my YouTube videos on there and she said I can't believe how much you're into this ghost stuff. I remember all the stuff that used to go on at your house and I remember that one time I was over there and we heard that dog barking upstairs except you guys didn't have a dog and that was so creepy. We would hear this dog bark upstairs all the time but we didn't have a dog. I don't know if it was Moochie's voice but I don't think it was because it sounded more like it was a smaller dog maybe like a terrier like a tiny terrier kind of like scrappy like what I have now. It was definitely weird. Okay. Now, something happens to my brother, Joe and Bruce, they've told me about this, and my husband, Justin, when they go metal detecting. Now what metal detecting is, is they take their metal detectors, it's a device that they use to scan the ground, to try to dig up old coins and relics and coins and relics and jewelry and, okay, that's their hobby if they like it, okay, I'm not going to judge. Hey, I hunt ghosts, that's my hobby. I'm not judgmental. Anyways. There's a thing that happens to them that I almost want to get a metal detector and get my ass out there where they're having this happen just to hear it. What happens to them sometimes when they're around really old houses or foundations of old houses doing this, in their headphones that they have connected to their metal detector, and it especially happens when they're not metal detecting, like when they're down digging the ground but they still have their headphones connected to the metal detector they'll hear voices. Now, you can say, oh, they're picking up radio frequencies, they're picking up, you know, airplanes or what have you, but they're not hearing, like, audio, audible, like, um, you know, Breaker Breaker 101. They're hearing quiet, whispering, creepy voices. That's how my husband described it. He was very creeped out the time he heard it. He was over an an old site where an old school used to be, like an 1800 school, one room schoolhouse. They tore it down, but it's not there anymore, but he was detecting around the site it used to be. And he said every single time he set the detector down and went to dig a hole, he heard the whispering to the point that he thought that somebody was behind him, you know, screwing with him. And it creeped the crap out of him. And I mean, he was creeped out when he got home. So that's another incident of disembodied voices. Um, in here, one Saturday when my husband was out doing the metal detecting, like I lose him when the weather gets nice out, he's gone metal detecting all the time, which is fine, that's his hobby. I don't judge, you know. Um, I was, you know, just walking past the basement and I heard whistling down there. So I was like, shit. You know, I'm thinking some guy like got in through the one of the windows down in the basement. And I'm, you know, first thing I did, guys, 
I crap you not. You think I would have went and got my recorder and my EMF reader or what have you? But I went in on the butcher block and I pulled out the, the carving knife and I was like, all right, guy, if you're down there, we're going to fight. But uh, I went over to the door and I heard it and it was like there was a man down there working on something like the electricity whistling away, you know, happy as can be. And I opened the door, I'm like, who's down there, you know? You know, as soon as I opened the door, the whistling stopped. And I went down there, and I'm like, hey. but nobody was down there. And part of me knew, like, intuitively, I knew there wasn't anybody down there, that it was, like, a spirit, you know? But it creeped me out, so. I've heard the whistling again. It was a few nights ago. I was in bed. I just turned the lights off after reading my book. I'm reading Anne of Avonlea now. And, uh... I just got into bed, got in the covers, trying to go to sleep, and right outside my bedroom door I'm hearing whistling, just like there's a guy or a girl or what have you whistling a happy tune, and I'm just like, oh. I'm thinking to myself, why don't they do this door in the day? Why do they gotta do it at night when I'm trying to go to sleep? You know, I'm not afraid of ghosts, but I definitely don't want them coming into my room at night when I'm trying to sleep whistling. Anybody would be freaked out about that, even the bravest of the brave, okay? That's just my take on it. So, you know, sometimes I hear whis whispering when I'm trying to go to sleep at night and there was an incident of disembodied voices in this house that I really wish I could tell you guys, but like I've been saying, it's the scariest thing that ever happened to me with the paranormal and I need my husband here to tell you because he said he really wants to be a part of that video. So hopefully, maybe when we get back from the shore, we will shoot that video together. Anyways. Tell me your stories of disembodied voices. I want to hear if you guys have ever heard a voice and it was not attached to a body. Whether you heard it in headphones, whether you heard it just yelling out in the air and you knew that it just was not somebody that was there, let me know. Do a video response if you want. If you don't, just tell me in the comments. I don't care. I know video responses are a pain in the ass. I don't even know why I say that to you guys. And thank you so much for watching, and make sure you comment, and you rate, and subscribe, and I appreciate all the support I'm getting, and thank you so much if you're already subscribed to me. It's very much appreciated. Bye!